Hey guys, it is Miss Simrino. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you're brand new, I am so excited that you decided to join me here today for the next installment of our little save file overview series. That's kind of a mouthful. Maybe I should come up with a name. I don't know. But if you guys did not know, I have released the very first version of my save file. Now this means that not every single world has been completely renovated, but there is a good chunk of each world that has been renovated. So the very first thing that we're going to be looking at is some of the starter homes. We're gonna be looking at the townies I made over, the original families, then we're going to be checking out some of the actual starter homes. We'll go into build mode and we'll go take a look at them. We'll visit some of the families and then we'll visit some of the community lots. So to start breaking this down, we have a few starter homes in Oasis Springs. Now, as a reminder, the number of starter homes in each world does vary because I think the way I kind of approached it is in Willow Creek and Oasis Springs, I tried to maintain a fair amount of the starter homes, but in the other worlds, I just kind of pulled together the builds that I thought were most appropriate with families I can envision. So it basically it kind of varies here, but we do have two starter homes in Oasis Springs. Oh, actually three. We have three. We have 21 Prospect Road over here in the Parched Prospect neighborhood. You can see I'm very original with the names of the lots. <laughs> we also have six Bedrock Straight in Bedrock Straight, yet again, very creative. But then we also have a micro trailer. I actually completely overlooked giving this one an address, so that will be something that I alter for version two. But that is actually a tiny home, an actual micro tiny home. So as a starter, this could end up giving your Sims a ton of perks and benefits. Now in Oasis Springs, I don't remember exactly how many townies originally came in this world, but I'm trying to recall that I believe I maintained all townies, especially if they lived in homes in the world in particular. But we're gonna break this down a little bit. I am going to actually start over here with the Rumi's household. Now, am I the only one that didn't realize that this household even existed in Oasis Springs? I hope not, because I had no freaking idea, but they got makeovers as well as the land grab family, though I didn't touch them too much. I kind of liked the way that they looked <laughs> for the most part. And then we also have Johnny Zest, of course, and last but certainly not least, the Caliente household, which I will note, I got rid of Katrina because that is not canon. She was in none of the other sims games and i wanted the caliente don lothario household here to be reminiscent of how they looked in the sims 2 you might even be able to tell with their outfits so i kind of made the biggest alterations to them there are five original families in oasis springs including the o'dwyer household the ellis henson household the greer household the Riggins household, and last but certainly not least, literally one of my favorite households that I created for my save is the Bajwa household. As you can see, huge family of eight Sims with a ton of kids. I'm obsessed with them. I really, really, really like them. And you can also tell that there are, of course, a few EA original lots here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six original EA lots that still need to be updated, renovated, torn down, rebuilt, whatever you want to say, but we do have a ton of original lots as well. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We have 15. <laughs> Isn't it joyous to just hear me count these out loud? We have 15 uh, lots that I created as well. Now, Johnny Zest's trailer was a renovation just because I did really like his trailer, but I made it a little bit smaller, made it a little bit more like fitting to his personality. You guys will see it. And just like in the last video, if there are any associated videos with the builds that we're looking at, I will link them up in the top right-hand side of the screen as we tour them. But now that we've kind of done a little bit of a brief overview from the map, let's go ahead and check out some of the starter homes. Here we are at 21 Prospect Road, one of the very first starter homes that I created for Oasis Springs. Now, it is very reminiscent of the build that was originally here because there was a starter home here to begin with when you load up a fresh save. 
and I did somewhat want to emulate the shape, but I wanted it to kind of be my own at the same time. Some of the starters I've been very comfortable strictly renovating, but this one I did build from the ground up, even if I was trying to emulate the original shape. So when you go inside here, this is a two bedroom, one bathroom starter home. The kitchen is actually probably one of the most furnished. I gave this starter a little <laughs> dining section, which I didn't do in some of the other ones. And it's mainly because these eco lifestyle objects, I thought fit the style of this build. And they're super, super cheap because these are the ones that you have to craft on your own. This starter is just under 18,000 simoleons, so it would be a more expensive one for a single sim, but if you think about moving in with a couple, this could be absolutely perfect. I also included the Penny Pixies lot trade, as I mentioned in the Willow Creek overview. I tried to assign this to every single starter because your sims just might get a few spare simoleons every now and then. And I also added a few more lot traits, including sunny aspect, so the sims may be more energized, happy, or inspired. And I added the homey aspect, so cooking, mixology, handiness, and gardening could increase a little bit faster. They will quickly master it according to this lot trait. So I thought that that was kind of a nice mix. And this lot, I think, in my opinion, is very, very pretty. And I just really, really enjoy this spot. This is one of my favorite spots of Oasis Springs just because of all of the greenery and really just the location. The sites in Oasis Springs, I think are totally underrated. I was talking with someone on Twitter about this just the other day. I think the desert worlds all in all are underrated. Oasis Springs, Strangerville. I really like Oasis Springs. And when I first got The Sims 4, I never really gave it any attention. Now that we've checked out one of the starter homes, let's go ahead and visit some of the families here. Okay, so. I love this family and I completely forgot about them until I loaded up their home. So this is the Greer family. I want to introduce you guys to them. They are a smaller family that consists of Cal Greer. He is married to his wife, Sundance. Yes, Sundance. And then they have their daughter, January, who is a high school student. Now, my thought behind this family, and I'm I'm literally obsessed with the idea, and I don't know why. I think it's because my mom is kind of a hippie. I don't say that lightly. She's a hippie, okay? <laughs> but um, this is actually a build that I did a couple of years ago. I believe I titled it as the Groovy Mid-Century Home. And again, I will put the link up in the top right-hand corner if you want to check it out. But basically the story behind this family is that Cal and Sundance met at uh, Simstock i.e. Woodstock, and it's been love ever since, but they really haven't left that time period. So their house, it's not only just mid-century style on the outside, but it is so, so colorful. And the only way that I could think to describe it was that it's super groovy. So let's start on the lights. It's a little bit bright in here, but this is the living space, which is just, <laughs> it's so overwhelmingly bright. I love it so, so much. This is kind of a little hallway area. We've got their kitchen here, which I think is really cute. I loved using a lot of the bowling. I think it's the bowling stuff pack, right? I was gonna say the bowling night stuff pack, but the bowling stuff pack came in handy so much here as well as get famous over here we have cal and sundance's room they're very artsy by the way i believe we'll look at their jobs in a second but i believe that cal is a conservationist he's really into conserving the environment and i believe sundance is an artist so there's a lot of creativity going on in this home and this is january's room here as well they also have this huge backyard that's kind of tiered i really like it they've got the hot tub they have an outdoor dining space i feel like they entertain like they are the center the hub of maybe their adult friend group and all of them just party like they really haven't left Simstock at all. That's kind of my thought process. But I really, really enjoy this family. I feel like they'd be a lot of fun. And basically the twist in the story that I wanted to put here is that January doesn't really vibe with her parents that much. She's not as carefree. She's kind of serious. She's a little bit more quiet. And I think she actually wants to go off to university and her parents are like, no, down with the man, down with the establishment. They might not support her, but she doesn't really know yet. So that's kind of where I was leaving the story. Now the Greers live, I was going to say right next door to the uh, Ellis Henson family. So we were actually going to go over there and check them out next. Next up, we have the Ellis Hansen family. And before I get too far into the family, I wanted to note that this is one of the, f like my favorite builds that I've ever, ever done. It's called It's a 70s House. Again, it is up on my channel. I will link it for you. But my goal for this house, just ready. If, if you have not seen it, just get ready. It's disgusting. <laughs> And I say that kindly, I really, really do. So I wanted this to really look like a mismatched 70s house with like 
kind of very vibrant, gross carpet, this weird linoleum. I wanted a mix of different styles and odd looking objects. And I just loved putting this one together so, so much. You can see here that this is their little living room. Let me actually put the walls up really quick. They've got their living room here. They've got their little dining room. This is their very lime green kitchen. <laughs> It's just so not my style. It is very, very bright, very colorful, not my thing. And then this over here, even though we do have this faux garage door, which technically your Sims can use to paint a mural, which I thought was nice. This is Cade's room. That is their adopted son. We'll, we'll get into it. That's Cade's room. And then this is the master bedroom for Xavier and his husband, Will. So Xavier and Will, the second they met, it was basically love at first sight. They knew they were gonna to be together forever. Similar to the Knox family in Willow Creek, like they just knew it, but they are also opposites attract because I believe, let me make sure that I'm remembering this correctly. Yes, so Xavier is very, very outgoing. He's rambunctious. He's a huge goofball. He's a little mischievous, but then we also have Will who is a genius. He is family oriented. He's a little bit more reserved and you wouldn't think that they would be this perfect match but they work so well together as a team and then they adopted Cade. Cade completely changed their lives. They adopted him as a child and they're thinking about potentially adopting more children but at the same time they feel like their family unit is complete so you have no idea what they could be doing next but yeah that's their house. They have this little backyard as well where they have some gardening plots. They've got an outdoor dining section and this house is just I don't know. It it is just something else. Like the the shape is very very simple, which I enjoyed. The roofing is very simple. It's kind of flat in a weird way. <laughs> But I think it came together so nicely and I just really, really love this family as well. I love those stories of like opposites attract. They create this amazing family unit and I don't know, they're just both very loving Sims. I just, I really, really, really like them. And Cade, we don't really know who he is yet. He's a little bit lazy. Um, That's one of his traits. He's lazy. <laughs> But that's okay. It could be something that he could grow out of. I don't know if you guys do that with your Sims, but I will change traits depending on how I envision their growth. So even though he might be a lazy kid, he might become, I don't know, out, like athletic. He might end up loving the outdoors as he gets older, things like that. And since we have likes and dislikes, that could also kind of play a role in his character development. But yeah, I just really, really enjoy them. I think they're a very cute family and they weren't exactly the family I was envisioning being in Oasis Springs. I kind of saw them more as beach bums, but I don't know. They settled here and they're absolutely loving their lives. And the Ellis Hansen family lives right across the street from the O'Dwyer family, which I think <laughs> I see them outside their house. Lizbeth O'Dwyer and Callum O'Dwyer are just like walking down the sidewalk. So before they either head off to work, I hope they're not going to work right now. <laughs> before they leave us, we're gonna go visit them really quick. Okay, we caught them. I don't think they were off to work. I think they were coming home for work. So we, we got them just in time. So this is Callum and Lizbeth. They are married and they have their daughter. Now I've heard this pronounced Ashling or Aisling. It's whatever pronunciation you choose, but this is their one and only child. And um, I think Callum, now I was thinking that this family had a very strong Irish heritage. So that's where the names kind of came from and everything like that. I think Callum is originally from, I'm gonna say Ireland. I know we don't have an equivalent in The Sims, but that's kind of what my thought process was. And I think this family is actually considering leaving the desert because Lizbeth very much enjoys the outdoors. She loves greenery. She's a freelance botanist. She's actually in the... Oh, actually, that's that's her aspiration, but she's she's literally in the career uh, for gardening. She is a botanist currently, and I think she wants to go somewhere a little bit more green, but they don't want to uproot um, Ashling from everything that she knows here, her friends, her school. You know, they want her to have that stability, so they're thinking about it, but they haven't made decisions. And this is their home. Let me just turn on all the lights. So when you first walk in, you've got the dining area, you have the kitchen, which is very, very modern. I went a little bit modern with this home, and I actually enjoyed it. I gotta do more modern builds, you know. And this is the one and only bathroom, but this is the master bedroom here. This is Ashling's room as well. I think she really likes the color purple. I think she really wants to travel too. Now her trait is just good right now. She doesn't really have 
anything else going on, she's going to discover who she is a little bit later on. And this is their little living room, which I thought was really cute. And the house is kind of big. I have this outdoor dining section in the front, which is a little bit different from a lot of my builds. There's also this little carport here, which I thought was nice, even though, you know, we don't have cars. And then since Lizbeth is a botanist and she loves the outdoors and just needs more greenery and life surrounding her in this desert world she has this huge gardening area she's got a ton of gardening plots as well as the vertical ones from eco lifestyle they have a little fire pit out here and a swing set so ashling has a few things to do as well next we will move on to the riggins family we'll head over to the bajwa household and then we'll take a look at some of the community lots here we are at the Riggins household. You can see that this family is split between two trailers. And that is because um, we've got the parents here. We have Eileen and Harrison. Faith is actually their daughter whose husband mysteriously disappeared. And that kind of left her in a tight spot with their daughter. Well, with her daughter, Raylan. So we don't know where dad is. He just, he just, he's gone. He's gone. So she moved back with her parents to kind of get back on her feet and she's going to Foxbury to become a teacher. And we have no idea if we're ever gonna find Raylan's dad or not, but Faith's goal is to purchase a house of her own. But in the meantime, she went home to stay with her parents and her dad has always been a tinkerer. Always, always, always. But her parents are also a little bit, they're kind of like hoarders, you know, they are. So there's a lot of junk on their actual property. They have this little shed in the back here for her dad to be tinkering with a bunch of stuff. He's got his woodworking bench there. There's like spare tires out here, broken signs. Like some things just don't make sense. You know, there's just junk everywhere, but there's a reason for that. And it's because her dad kind of ran out of space at his junkyard, which is right next door. So this is a community lot. It is a generic lot, but what I put inside here in this actual building so it served some kind of purpose is I put a laundry mat now it's a little bit gross I mean it is a junkyard I don't think that they really keep up with this place too much but that's what her dad has always done that's how he's made his living he's a junker that's what he is he's kind of a a picker he's a picker so I think he sells junk to people that want to like renovate cars or he's got parts and everything like that. So there is a laundromat in here. So it does serve a purpose if you guys wanted your Sims to bring their laundry here for a little bit of added challenge if they don't have a washer and dryer at home. But that is why they live right next door to the junkyard. And that's why the junkyard exists. I will speed right through this. Let's go check out the Bajwa family. Our final stop in regards to families in Oasis Springs is with the Bajwa family. This is a huge family of eight Sims, two parents, six kids ranging in age, and they live in this beautiful, that, again, that didn't sound humble. I really like it. This is a Mediterranean mansion that I ended up building uh, some time ago. Ignore this glitching, it's fine. But they live right across the road from the land grab family. Now I'm not gonna go through a tour of the land grab house. You guys can check it out if you wanna download the save. And I will, oh, I should be putting it on the gallery very soon. That just triggered a memory for me to do that. But yeah, they live right across from the land grabs. I have a feeling that they kind of have a bit of a developing rivalry. Now, the Bajwa family just moved to Oasis Springs as well for dad, Shiv, to take a new job. Now let's introduce you to the family tree a little bit because there's a lot of Sims here. So we have Shiv, he is the father, and then we also have Sachi, she's the mom. Now she is a very successful online Plopsy seller. She knits, that's her thing. And she decided to do that so she could stay home with all of her kids, though she might be considering going back to a regular nine to five very soon. But it really kind of depends on how the youngest two get on. So we have Zion and Indali. Those are our toddlers. We've got Ekta and Anika, our children. And then we have two teenagers, Ivan and Ryan. And I absolutely love this family. Now, all of these names are Hindi names to my knowledge. I was doing a little bit of research, making sure that I was getting appropriate representation in here. And if I can find all of those meanings for the names again, I will put them on screen now. I'll give myself a moment for you guys to check them out before we start touring the house. But I really, really loved looking up the names and trying to capture the culture of this family and really just their dynamic. Now, let me just turn on all the lights yet again. 
Okay, so this house is huge. Um, this is the living room. Looks like we actually have Ryan down here about to watch TV, but I really loved this home. I liked the color scheme. It's one that I hadn't done before at the time. We also have this huge dining room. This is their kitchen. Now there is a dog bowl here, which was an oversight because when I built this, I hadn't had the family ready. So you could of course, put this family elsewhere or you can just kind of get rid of these items because they're not going to be able to have a dog unless you have a mod to allow more sims in a household but anyway there's also a downstairs bathroom and now this is Sachi's craft room it's it's nuts it is absolutely nuts there's so many items in here but there's also a little creativity table so the kids can kind of join her in here if they want now if we go upstairs we have this big landing area and here are toddlers hi guys <laughs> They're so cute. And now this is their little toddler room. Over here is kind of like a, this wasn't going to be the family computer per se, but there's a couple of computers for the kids to like do homework and stuff was my thought. But some of them also have desks in their bedroom. So this is for our teen boys. This is their room. They also have their own bathroom, which I think is awesome. And over here is mom and dad's room. Very big room. Oh gosh, it looks like Anika was about to get out of their bed. <laughs> And they have their own bathroom as well. And then over here are, is the girls room, our children. And they actually do have their own desk to do some homework and stuff like that. They also have a ton to do outside. They've got a swing set, the toddler pool, outside dining. They've got the grill and they have this really big pool as well with the diving board and everything. I mean, they are pretty much set. And I believe Shiv is a very successful lawyer. And that is pretty much attributing to why they can afford this house. But they are one of my favorite families. I loved making them. And let me just say... Actually, let's bring, let's bring Sachi here. There she is. That kit came in clutch. She is beautiful. These items were stunning to me. This would be one of the kits that I would really recommend if you really enjoy this kind of clothing, this, this representation, this style, because beautiful. Okay, and before I let you guys go, we're going to take a look at some of these community lots. Now I'm thinking that I will just show you the park and the community pool quickly. There are builds for the Dash and Go Diner as well as the La Cantina del Cranio. And I will just link those top right hand side of the screen so you guys can check out the builds if you wanted to and kind of hear the thought process behind them. But since I don't have videos for the Desert Bloom Park and the Desert Bay Community Pool, we will go check those out and we'll start with the pool. So Oasis Springs, is a desert world, okay? And there was nowhere for your Sims to just go take a nice relaxing dip in the pool. And I didn't want every single Sim household to have their own pool, okay? Like that, that's where I was at. So I built this little teeny tiny pool. <laughs> it's really not that big, but it's kind of a decent size. The lot isn't that big, but there is a nice public pool for your Sims to come to. There's floaties for them to use, some places to sunbathe. And I even included this vending machine here because this is from Island Living. So you can get your own floaties or towels could also get a jet ski or a canoe probably not something that you want at the community pool but you know it's there you could also buy some snacks there's even a little toddler pool back there <laughs> i think it's really cute and then in here we do just have bathrooms and showers now the toilet and showers are combined but i figured your sims are seeking privacy to do either of those activities so i thought it wasn't a bad way to kind of conjoin these things also put the restroom doors here and there's just a few sinks so there really isn't too much going on on this lot but i thought that it was a nice little addition to a presumably very very warm world last but certainly not least is the desert bloom park now when i was doing a world by world save a lifetime ago is how it feels. This is actually a park that I built off camera because Oasis Springs was going to be the second world that I released. Never completed it, but the park got done. <laughs> and I really, really liked this park, similar to kind of what I did with the Willow Creek Central Park. I wanted there to be tons of activities and I really wanted to it to fit the world. So you can see here that this is where you enter. We have a nice statue here. I just, I thought it was fitting because I feel like there were mines out here somewhere at some point, which in fact, if you guys didn't know, um, there is over here. Oh, there it is. You can barely see it, but that's the entrance to the secret world to, I think it's Forgotten Grotto, which was a mine. <laughs> and you need to have level 10 handiness skill or something else to be able to get in there. But I thought it was appropriate. We also have a little child's area over here, swing sets, sandbox, jungle gym, monkey bars, everything. If you walk down here, you have your little picnic area with some grills and picnic tables. Of course, many garbage cans, because you always need them. I thought this was kind of a nice addition too, similar to what I did with the fresh fruit and veggie stand in Willow Creek Central Park. I added a few of these 
little things here so you could get just different kinds of food. Now, unfortunately, your Sims will have to hire these vendors out of their own pocket. Not ideal, but if you wanted to do that, you had the ability to do it. I thought it was a nice addition. And here, this was before, of course, the pond tool, but I created a pool here to make it look like a pond. And I used to live in Texas. I don't know if a lot of people actually know that. I used to live in Texas and San Antonio, the river walk, river walk was one of the places I always wanted to go to never went by the way went to san antonio once for like two hours never went to the river rock river walk it was weird um but this was kind of inspired by that so i wanted there to be kind of this semi-open area where you could just walk you could sit watch the water and the fountains and everything i thought it was a really nice addition but when you go through the little river walk here that I'm going to call it. I know I want to stumble over those words again. There is the little toddler area. So there's the giant toddler jungle gym and a sandbox. And last but not least, you have a basketball court. It's actually not the last thing, but you have a full basketball court as well. I thought that that was kind of nice. And then there's a little bit of a water park without a full pool. I already had the community pool. So I thought, why not add a water slide here, some sprinklers and a little toddler pool just to have another activity in case you come to the park with your Sims on a very, very warm day. Well, everyone, I will leave you here. That is Oasis Springs in kind of a nutshell. These overviews are a lot longer than I was anticipating, but I just want to show you how much love went into the save file. And you can anticipate that in the next version, some of these, if not all of them, will likely be rebuilt and or renovated at some point. I can't wait to see how I choose to kind of structure versioning and what kind of changes I'll make in between now and whenever version two comes out. I have I have no clue. I have no goal set for myself with that, but we will see. So thank you guys so much for checking this out. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts on this save. Everything that I've been getting has just been, it's just been so positive. And again, I just want to thank you profusely from the bottom of my heart for your kind words, for the screenshots that you guys are sending me. Like I, I literally am in love with all of this. So thank you so much. And I will catch you next time I post a video. Bye.